Welcome back everybody and I'm doing a product review today on another product by Vermisterra and this is an absolutely wonderful product haven't had time to really get into it and review it but here we are and we're working on it now so what we're looking at here this is called Cocoa Choir and this is a different type of Cocoa Choir than the normal stuff you're used to getting like for example I have Cocoa Choir here that comes in a a brick form that you have to uh, hydrate and it comes like this now this product uh, consists of cocoa choir as well as cocoa fiber and what that is is there's the strings and then there's the little stuff that looks like coffee grounds is what makes up the uh, cocoa choir that's what you see right here so that's what that generally is this product is a little bit different this product is it's more, it's cocoa choir, but it's more of a cocoa chip and cocoa fiber type of product. And this is what it looks like. I broke it down dry. Now, you can break this down dry the way I'm doing it, as opposed to with this, for example. You can't break this down dry very easily unless you've got sledgehammers and you're able to grind it back up in a machine or something. But you're not breaking that down dry and, and basically... Um, you know getting it dry for whatever reason you might want it dry uh, you have to pre-soak that stuff in order to separate that brick this stuff on the other hand you can break it up dry and uh, use it in a dry form like I'm doing here for example I'm using this as a top mulch and I want it dry I don't want it pre-soaked I want it to slowly build its moisture level up as I water the pots and stuff like that I don't want it pre-soaked or else I can use regular wood chips like you see here and there's a reason why I'm using this product as opposed to regular wood chips which regular wood chips are fine we'll get into that I'll talk a little bit about that I just want to show you the product first and so this is what it is you're basically what you're looking at here is it's mostly consists of uh, cocoa chips and cocoa fiber mostly there is some like powdery type of uh, um, you know choir in there it's in there as well but that's generally not the, the purpose of this product so you're probably wondering what is this stuff well just so you know when you get a coconut in the store and that's a brown round thing and you have to kind of crack it open with a, with a hammer to get to the milk on the inside as well as the flesh and all that stuff. Um, yeah, the coconuts don't come off the tree like that. They come off the tree with a skin on the outside. They call that a coconut husk. And it, you, oftentimes if you see in the movies, it's a, it's a green thing hanging from the tree and, and they float in the ocean and all that there is a very thick layer of coconut husk around the coconut itself so that husk needs to be uh, removed from the coconut in order to get the coconuts out of it so when they process these coconuts commercially and they're cutting off all these husks uh, they need to do something with the material and so they process it like this and this is the byproduct of processing the coconut they take the coconut uh, husk and they grind it down into either coconut choir or coconut fiber or coconut chips and that's what you're looking at here and so this is mostly chips now i'll show you the product here now if you can see here it's like a wood chip but this is not wood this is coconut okay this is a coconut thing this is not wood chips now parts of it will be harder than others and other parts will be a little bit more fibery and soft, you know, but that's not the purpose. We're not making a pillow out of this. We're using it for our gardening in our pots and in our gardening. So that's what you're looking at. Here's a close look at it. You can see the fibers in there. And if you just keep crumbling it up, it won't necessarily turn stringy, but it, it coconut husk, it, there's a lot of different elements that are going on inside the coconut husk. So that's basically what you're looking at. You've seen the fibers, you've seen the chips, you've seen a little bit of the cocoa choir. And that's basically what this product is. Now, there's a few ways to use this product. You can, now you can actually soak, pre-soak all of this if you really want to and actually plant directly in it. And in some cases, I would say that would be appropriate depending on what it is you're planting in there. Um, 
it, it can give you a added benefit to being able to grow in this type of medium as opposed to your normal soil medium which is like what you see here and this, this can have a lot of benefits but there can also be a lot of problems associated with starting seeds in soil like that because of the living organisms in there and they will cause massive dampening off if there's any kind of mycology inside that soil with this product here it's generally sterile um, peat moss is sterile this is a sterile product there's no mycology living in there so when you plant fresh seeds into this you don't have to really worry about damping off you don't have to solarize the soil or the seed starting mix before you plant in it just in case there's mycology living in it of course you want to make sure you clean your pots really good with with bleach and um, hydrogen peroxide you make sure those pots are absolutely clean because even one spore inside your pot will cause things to go mycology mycological so you don't want to take that kind of a chance. So this product is generally sterile, okay? And so you can plant your, your stuff directly in there as a seed starting, though I don't necessarily rec recommend that. So I don't necessarily recommend this for a seed starting, but again, it depends on the kind of seeds that you're starting. There's a lot of types of seeds that you can start in this, like large seeds. You want to start uh, an almond tree or you want to start something that's you know a, a cherry tree or you want to start from a large seed like that this is perfect for that kind of a thing but when you were getting into like vegetables like um, you know tomatoes and peppers and small really small seeds like that probably not good to necessarily start in so that's my opinion as far as seed starter goes now what I'm using this product for this year is for I am using it as a top mulch now I could go wood chips and I have plenty plenty of uh, processed wood chips to go around but I want to use this product mainly for the main reason is that it's sterile we don't have to worry about introducing now I, the, one of the downsides to using uh, wood chips is it can introduce a lot of insects mycology as well as bacterial and viral diseases that may or may not be in those wood chips so when you're using wood chips there is some risk associated with it one of those insect problems you got to worry about is slugs because slugs like to burrow themselves in between the cavities of the wood chips and when you put the wood chips down in your pot and you bring it in in for the winter you're going to winterize your plants over or even out here if you're going to leave them out here uh, those slugs will get inside and they'll live and they'll lay eggs and stuff underneath those wood chips either in the pot or when the wood chips are in the bag or in your garden and so next thing you know you got a, a slug problem indoors and or outdoors depending on where you're growing so yeah that's one of the main problems is is slugs associated with wood chips wood chips are great but you got to make sure that you get all the slug eggs and stuff out of there so you don't have that problem with this product you don't have to worry about that it's pretty much cleared processed it's sterile it's slug free and uh, you're not going to have a problem so this particular year I am using it for a top mulch and I'm going about anywhere between three quarters to an inch deep of a layer and this is generally I'm using it uh, you know, like I told you as top mulch but to generally keep slugs down from burrowing in there as well as other insects like uh, cucumber beetles yes cucumber beetles can be a very big problem they like to burrow inside your your stuff this kind of stuff makes it hard for them to do that so they won't burrow as easy and other insects like flea beetles and spider mites and things like that they don't like the surface of this material it's very sharp very jagged it's a lot of fibers in there it's not uniform and wet and moist and easy for them to get in so it's a good top mulch it keeps the moisture in the pot and that's what i'm using it for this year now the other application is you can use this actually in your soil mix you can um hydrate this brick as as you would do with regular coca choir you can hydrate the brick it says that it expands one point it, it expands to approximately 1.7 cubic feet so it's not going to expand very much it's not going to expand like the regular kind of coca choir this stuff will expand a little but not massively at least i don't think so so but that's what they're generally saying it's going to expand a little bit but not a lot now you can pre-moisten it and you actually can add this to the soil and why would you want to add something with such large particle sizes into your soil well let's talk about that a little bit now when when you have soil 
a problem a lot of people don't understand with um you know with gardening and making soils is they don't understand particle size in soil it's, it's very important you understand this when it comes to soil and particle size if you look at my soil you'll see a lot of a lot of different sized particles in there pieces of wood chips and branches and i got uh, i got some um you know the the uh what do you call that perlite in there and it's just all, it's nothing's uniform and the reason why i do that is because it allows the soil to drain if you if you were to just take all your soil and you sift it with nothing inside of it except soil and the particle size that's very small and it's just that soil and that size your drainage is going to be very poor it's going to be it's going to get waterlogged and you're going to get problems you're going to end up with a lot of problems and you generally don't want that to happen you want to be able to have different particle sizes and you you want it to be all random inside of there don't worry about the roots they'll get around it but you want particle size to be different and allows for good drainage and eventually those particle sizes all those little extra pieces that all breaks down eventually and it also feeds your plants at the same time now some people will argue with you and, and they'll say there's too many big pieces in there and that's going to suck the nitrogen out of the soil because now it's it's converting over yeah to some degree that might be true a little bit but it's not enough to really affect the growth of the plant um, I mean, you look at some of my plants here, the way I make up my soil. Look how beautifully green and everything these plants are. Of course, I have the Vermis Terra worm castings mixed in with my soil. So that's really, really doing a contribution to this. But you can see the general health of the plant is really good. The, the growing structure of the plant is very uniform. It's very tall. It's very bright and brilliant. Uh, the plants are, are con continuously uh, growing upwards. They're very stout, strong stems. A lot of that is contributed to proper moisture in the pot. Why is the moisture proper in the pot? Because it drains correctly. And why does it drain correctly? Because I have a little bit of sand in there, but mainly because I mix I mix a lot of my pre-composted wood chips into that soil. Not a lot, but enough for me just to break up particle size. That makes a massive difference on the overall health of your plant. That water has to drain out of your plant. Okay, so just so you know, you don't want perfectly uniform particle sizes for your soil. You want that si soil size to be random in all different shapes. You want really fine stuff, but you also want a lot of um, just different size stuff into your soil. Now, in this particular case, I already have like wood chips mixed in there and stuff like that. So I don't necessarily need to add this to it. I need this product this year for me for a top mulch. So that's what I'm using this product for. But this will work in tandem with what I just told you with your soil. You can mix this into your soil to change up random particle sizes in your soil so you get really good, steady, and consistent draining. Why do I say that? Because soil, after it's after you use wood chips in your soil, like I got here, and it's, it's pre-composted, but it's still kind of chip yet, by the end of the year, most of those wood chips will actually break down and turn into soil. That's great, but the problem is, is my whole soil is becoming uniform in particle size. And what does that mean? That means it's not going to drain as well. Eventually, that takes a toll on your plant. And then your plant starts to get yellowing leaves. It's starting to get overwatering. It, it, it was great in the beginning, but now it's not great so great anymore. And that's because the wood chips are breaking down. They were pre-composted and are in that stage where it's always moist. It's just going to break down even faster. So it's good, it's just by the end of the year, that's going to be toast, basically. I'm going to need to repot that and put new stuff on there. When you put something like this, where it's straight, clear, clean, uncomposted, it's not going to exact uh, the nitrogen from my soil, and it's going to protect my plant. When I put something like that down, it's going to last a lot longer than that initial year that I'm putting it in there for. And in my particular case, that's very important because I winter all these plants over. And so they need to survive the winter and they need a top mulch to keep the moisture from getting sucked dry from indoors. So that's where this product is working for me this year. It's going to work really good as a top mulch. Again, I could use wood chips, but those wood chips are breaking down and it, the soil is beginning to become uniform. And that's going to, it caused me problems last year. And it was great. I used the uh, wood chips in my soil, but the problem last year is those wood chips digested very quickly. And uh, they're gone. And now I got to repot if I'm going to bring any of my older plants and I got to take them out, beat all that dirt off them and start all over again, you know. 
So it's kind of a pain in the neck, but if you use something like this, for example, this isn't going to break down right away. This is going to stay nice and uniform like this, you know, for, for a couple of years anyway. It will break down eventually, but it'll stay like this for a while, and that's what you want. You don't want to put particle sizes of something that's going to break down in like six months, and now your plant's turning yellow because it's getting waterlogged, and you don't know what it is. Well, you want something to maintain that that uh, that permeability in your soil, so it keeps draining. That's why we use perlite, because perlite is supposed to give you that kind of an effect, but it doesn't break down, and that's why people use it. But it's not it's not sized enough. It's hard to get perlite that's you know uh, it's too small. I, I like stuff like this where you see these bigger chunks. That's what you want to mix in your soil. Again, you're going to want to pre-soak. If you're going to put it in your soil, you're going to want to pre-soak this and let it sit soaked for a while. And then drain that off uh, to make sure you get out any excess salts or anything that might be uh, in the cocoa choir itself. You want to make sure you, you soak this particular kind. If you're using it for soil, you want to make sure you pre-soak it for like a day or two. Let it sit completely saturated in a bucket of water. And then let that, and then drain all that off of there. Once it's done, it's fully saturated. Then mix it into your soil. Don't mix it in dry. That that ain't no good. I'm keeping it dry because I'm using it for a top mulch. I know I keep saying that, but I want you to understand what I'm doing. And so this product again can be taken apart and disassembled without hydrating, and that's perfect for people like myself who want to make a top mulch. So in in my case, I'm just doing it a little bit at a time. Uh, if you were had a lot of pots and you needed this broken up right away, well, just get a wheelbarrow and start hacking at it with a claw hammer, and you'll break it up pretty easily. I mean, I'm doing it just a little bit at a time, but I want to just show you how easy it is to just, you know, separate it. You could just stick anything in there, a screwdriver if you want, and just kind of pull it up like that. Take the chunk that you want, right? Just grab a little bit like that, hold it over your pail, and just grind it up with your hand, and it's good to go. And yeah, you're gonna have some pieces like that. that. Again, guys, you want random, random particle size. Here's a good example of what a coconut husk will look like when when it's you know not fully grounded. Anyway, you can see all the fibers inside there. Now this is also good. This particular type of material for storing microbes for your soil, all your mycorrhizas, all your fungies, that are your good fungies and all that stuff, all your living good bacteria in your soil, they will live inside these little tiny, I don't know if you can see it, but if you look on the end here, there's like little channels in there, little chambers, little air strips, like, they will colonize that thing, and that'll act as a good uh, a place for your microbes to actually uh, you know, inoculate and live within that, and it keeps them nice and healthy because there's little air air pockets inside there. Again, it's aerating that soil, but it's a good product. I mean, I like the product, and like I said, for as far as seed starting goes, if you're the kind of person that you're going to start seeds that are a larger size, nut trees, tree seeds, um, you know, seeds that are generally large in size, you know, a lot of exotic fruits, like if you're somebody who's into like growing uh, tropical fruits and stuff like that, this would probably be a better medium for you than using your typical stuff like that. Because those kind of seeds, those tropical kind of seeds, they get sick and diseased very easily in regular soil. It's too, the moisture has got to be just right for those seeds, those kind of seeds to sprout. If you don't have, if it's too moist, it rots. If it's not moist enough, it, then it doesn't sprout. It, you you need to be at a certain moisture level. And soil, that kind of soil, like trying to start those seeds and something like this is not a good idea. It's just too dense for it. You need more aeration in it. And that's where a product like this would be really good for. If you're doing a lot of, um, you know, tropical fruits and stuff like that, tropical varieties of uh, plants and stuff, this is it right here. This is what you want to use. But again, you want to pre-soak it. So hopefully that answers some questions. I'm just trying to think of anything else about this product that I can uh, go over. Uh, you can read right here. It says um, it's pre-rinsed, so you generally don't have to worry about salt if it's pre-rinsed. So that's good that they do that. Uh, it's low EC. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, will not burn plants. That's good to know. It says 
uh, chips great for aeration. Now that's exactly what we're focusing on this year. Uh, well, or we're focusing on with you guys as far as, uh, you know, talking about mixing it with your soil. I'm more or less focusing on, you know, top mulching with it. This is, this is it. This is, if you're going to mulch your plants, if you're going to top mulch your plants, whether it's in pots or in your garden, you're going to want to either mulch them with pre-processed or mostly processed down uh, wood chips, or you're going to want to process them with this. So... I'm going to do all my pots. I should have enough to be able to do all my pots that I'm bringing indoors this year with the Cocoa Choir. And that's how I'm going to do uh, my pots. But you can use this in your garden for a top mulch too if you want. And you don't have to worry about digging it out at the end of the year or anything. That'll break down fine in the soil. In fact, you might want to order these by the bale if you're going to do a garden like, you know, a garden my size. And uh, just incorporate it into the soil. You might want to order several of these and break them down and then incorporate that into your soil. So you got that nice, that nice mix. <coughs> Unlike wood chips too, just so you know. When you get wood chips and they're fresh and white wood chips, you got to process wood chips. You got to let wood chips basically compost down for anywhere between two to four years before you actually start using it around your garden. Main reason for that is is when you get fresh wood chips, you don't know what kind of diseases that tree had that they ground up. It could have uh, slime mold disease. It could have bacterial disease. It may have insect. It may have been taken down because of insect infestation. So now there's eggs inside that wood chip, and you're putting that in your garden or near other trees. Now you're spreading those insect eggs to other trees. You don't know where those those um, those wood chips are coming from. So what you need to do is take those wood chips, find a pile, a place in your yard, and let them sit there for two to four years, and let them break down to about 65 to 70 percent, and then at that point you can start using that like a top mulch in your garden, as well as some of the soil that will come off of it. But you got to make sure that all of that slime mold and all that other stuff is all broken down out of those wood chips before you use it. With this product, you don't have to do that. This this product's not going to... You, you don't have to worry about slime mold. You don't have to worry about insect infestations from diseased trees or anything like that. You don't have to worry about none of that. You can just take this product, grind it up, and then use it. For me, I'm an indoor grower. I mean, I grow my peppers outdoors, but this is only about three to four months out of eight out of an entire 12 month year so eight months out of the year my plants are indoors and under lights so i need to be able to grow and think of things in terms of indoor growing rather than outdoor growing and this is where a product like this is more important to me indoors now outdoors i don't really care too much about outdoors i'm not worried about mulching my pots i do in the beginning of the season but you can see there's a lot of pots that aren't mulched and that's no big deal there's no point in me doing it now but indoors no we need that mulch on there i right, need something like here's mulch from wood chips and it's all right it's working but i mean i would prefer something like this because it's going to stay kind of dry and it's also going to keep down any insects and aphids i had a really bad aphid problem last year and i, I just think if i had mulch down on my pots i wouldn't have had as much of a problem because they're going to have a harder time you know, navigate. Aphids don't just live on your plant. They crawl up and down the stems. They crawl down onto your pots. They crawl down here. They crawl all over the place. Guys, aphids crawl everywhere. And so you need to create a, a something that's going to be a little more difficult for them to really crawl and cause a lot of problems. Again, that's where this coca choir, I'm hoping, will help assist in that. It'll make it more difficult for them to, you know, crawl, navigate across here. Hopefully, I, I don't have an aphid problem, but we want to keep that moisture in the pot in winter time because like where I live it gets so dry in the winter I can water that pot today and two days later that thing will be bone dry literally bone dry and you can see the dirt inside literally shrink and you separate from the wall I mean two days if I let two days go by it will dry and if I overwater it then what happens is it gets saturated and then the plant starts to get you know fungal diseases so I, I have to water just a little bit amounts multiple times per day all winter it's really a hassle but you can't overdo it you you can overdo it and, and you can't underdo it but you don't want to overdo or underdo and so that's why you need to add some kind of top mulch when you bring your plants indoors 
that's my experience anyway. You can't you can't just sit there and stick this in a uh, you know a pan or something like that and just pour that water in, let it sit in that water, let you know because that water will evaporate in about uh, four or five days. You know you could put like a uh, spill. You know what do you call those things? Those little the dishes you put under here and you could fill it up with water. Yeah, you can do that, but in the winter time you don't want to do that because your plants just ain't got the they're not growing like they are in full sun. You're growing them under light, so they're not going to necessarily transpirate and respirate the same way. That root can, that that bottom of that pot and those roots can go fungal very quickly. You don't want to do that indoors. You you can't do that. In outdoors, yeah, you can put those dishes on here in full sun and fill that dish up and water it and soak it and all that. Indoors, you can't do that. It's got to be done very, very carefully or else your plants are going to get sick and die. With pepper plants anyway. I mean, that's generally what I do. And and I, I would imagine it applies to some degree to tomato plants, but not to digress. So anyways, that's it. That's just a quick uh, video on the Coco Choir by Verma Terrace. Again, they also have a few other products here that I am recommending. I have been doing phenomenally well this year. And uh, this is their worm casting tape. If you don't know what it is, I did a video about worm casting tape. And uh, I highly recommend this product. This is a product I, I can't do without anymore. Now that I've been using this product, I, I don't. everything else seems to be inferior as opposed to the results that I get from this product. It, this product is amazing as far as getting the results. And of course, when we're talking about Vermis Terra, this is another product. Now I have been adding um, the worm castings to my, you know, my, my plants. And you can see the beautiful, look how beautifully green my plants are. I, I mean, I've been adding a lot of that too. I've been adding half a bag per mix. So when I do a mix, I add a half a bag of that. And I just, um, you know, I'll put it in here and I'll do my, you know, it's like a half a pail of peat moss, half a pail of soil, half a bag of that. And then I put my rock dust and stuff like that. But man, look at the beautiful plants. Look how beautifully green they are. No sickness. It's just, it's incredible. They're, they're brilliant this year very very bright and brilliant so it's their product is definitely uh i, I mean I, I i've i've tried a lot of products guys and unfortunately a lot of the products that i try i end up not reviewing because i'm just not happy with the results of them but this product no way this is this is top notch this is top shelf stuff right here guys this is the creme de la creme all right so um i'll leave links in the description where you can pick up this cocoa choir and if you have any questions about it, just comment below. I'll do the best I can to try to answer your questions on the Cocoa Choir. And you could visit their website if you want. And you can check out the other products they may have on there that you might be interested in. You could go to their website and visit um, vermisterra.com and see what other products they are selling there. These are the only products I have by them that I, I am reviewing. So uh, you you might be able to uh, get these as the, on their website as well. I'm not sure how that works. But I'll leave links to where you can buy these products as well in my description below. So that's it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.